It is 30 years since a new era of hope began in South Africa with the election of the African National Congress, led, of course, by Nelson Mandela. But tomorrow we'll learn whether that hope has finally expired when the country returns to the polls. The ANC has been at the forefront of South African politics since Nelson Mandela's release from prison. Four years after his long walk to freedom, he was elected president, hailing the promise of the so-called Rainbow Nation. His party has been in power ever since. But the current president, Cyril Ramaphosa, faces levels of discontent not seen by any of his predecessors. Recent polls have suggested support for the ANC at less than 50 per cent. Rohit, who reported from South Africa for ITV News for several years, has been back to see why so many are finally turning against the party of Madiba. In one image, the story of inequality in modern South Africa. In the distance, the skyscrapers of the richest square mile in the country. And beneath us, a township crumbling and forgotten. Its people are poor, black, and they've been failed. The shining buildings goad them from across the motorway. The electricity poles carry election posters, but rarely any power. 30 years since Nelson Mandela promised a better life for all. There's no water at all, no water. There's no toilets, there's no water, there's no electricity, there's nothing. Who do you blame for that? The government. Pamela leads us along the rows of shacks to show us her home. Eight months without water. Eight months without water? Yes, without water. Uh -huh. As we approach, she feels a sense of shame. While I'm still living on a shack, I am not going to vote. Democracy feels draining, 30 years after it brought such exhilaration. The history of modern South Africa is written in green and yellow and black. The ANC has been in power since the birth of the Rainbow Nation. It's accused of failure and corruption, but its historic role is a powerful draw. Honestly, better the devil you know than inviting a devil you don't know. Dr. Mampele Rampele was pregnant with Steve Biko's child at the time of his arrest. Dr. Rampele is considered an icon of the struggle. Her partner, Steve Biko, who died in police custody, might have become South Africa's first black president. She feels betrayed by the ANC. I have come to the sad conclusion, as the Archbishop did, that the ANC no longer represents the people of South Africa and their dreams. They represent themselves and themselves and themselves. Hi, Rohit. <laughs> We're in Soweto to meet the Malefe family. I'm good, how are you? We've known them for 14 years, almost half the country's time as a democracy. Good, thank you. Good, good. When we first came here, the neighborhood felt energized. Day one of the World Cup in South Africa, but the parents worried about the future this country would allow their children to have once the Vuvuzelas went quiet. Their son, Katwano, told me he wanted a career which combined his passion for medicine and his interest in football. For them, their icons were the politicians. Our icons are these football stars. There's a correlation in between, so... In 2010, I had spoken about dreams and, and this is me probably living the dream. After graduating from university, he became the physiotherapist for his favourite club, the Orlando Pirates. Never thought that I'd probably be a physiotherapist for a team I grew up supporting, uh, one of the biggest football clubs in the country. His sister is now a head teacher at an elite school. We teach a generation that is very vocal compared to us. We teach a generation that is not easily influenced into thinking a certain way. For me, ANC has worked very much. 30 years since Nelson Mandela promised a better life for all, his heirs are about to be judged on their attempts to deliver that. Rohit Katri, News at 10, Soweto.